This is, this is going to be a really short video on storm preparation, gasoline storage uh, for storm preparation or for catastrophic events, whatever, generators, extra fuel for vehicles, and so on and so forth. Look, this is a controversial topic that comes up on many different forums, people arguing, scientists arguing, people putting their 15 cents in on their, all these arguments. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you now, um, as far as storage drums, this is about blue storage drums. Now we can get into the black storage drums later, ones that are made out of, uh, out of ABS. Um, but for right now, we're discussing the blue. Obviously, you can store fuel. I've worked in the fuel industry for a short time, uh, where our job was to go out and siphon out water out of the pumps, I mean out of the tanks and the ground. We would have siphoned the bottom of the tanks get X amount of water in and we always use steel drums with steel bands um, but it's come recent age where blue drums became available uh, basically food grade storages and blue blue is a, a, a basic food grade storage barrel and it is it is a, a it is a, a UV resistant barrel I think that's what blue means uh, blue means it has a UV, a UV re resistant layer. That means it won't fade in the sun as much. Uh, it's resistance to the elements. Right, it resistance to the elements, etc. See, like this old gas can here. This is a very old gas can. 1980s. Yeah, well, not necessarily, but it was probably one of the first plastics made in the USA. Uh, not the first plastic, but, but in that realm. And then, of course, you got the latest model. Uh, cheap cheapo gas can which is full by the way gas um, the blue I've stored fuel in for probably a year and a half this drum right here had no problems with it um, and it's still holding up it's I mean it's a thick plastic if there are any doubts whether or not you could store fuel in them I mean you can always do your own test beforehand and expose it to some fuel like flip it upside down pour some gas on the lid see if it softens the plastic scratch at it but you're not going to know that to a long 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 time till it permeates the lining of the, of the drum extended periods extended yeah. periods when you store fuel in barrels like this it's good to fill them up almost all the way to the top leave basically no air that way you have you have no room for uh, com combustion inside of the barrel for heat and all that stuff um, and that's what I've done with this barrel and then I've taken it and, and, and stuck it back out in the yard and I've gotten steel drums but in a bind I didn't know that I could store fuel in this I had to trial and error this barrel and find out if it was if it was gonna hold up for me um, and then store it in a safe place of course um, so I had to, to do it the hard way. I, I, didn't, I didn't know the science behind it. I didn't know all that, that, that trash, um, that extra mumbo jumbo that we don't have time to, to do research on. But I can tell you that I've done it and, and it's held up. As long as it says this. Let me, let me prove this point to you and then I'll let you go. Because uh, there are lots of other videos out there. That are, there's a lot of things going on in the world right now that you should be looking at. Uh, like storms and things like that. Um... By the way, those folks in California, I hope everybody makes it out all right and is every fine. But I can tell you right now, as a survivor on the Gulf Coast, um, us guys over here are kind of chuckling at y'all with your 60 and 70 mile an hour wind. Maybe not the guy, maybe not the folks in Baja with the mudslides, but uh, try 100. But but when we're talking about making making it through Hurricane Katrina and stuff like that, and dealing with the Cajun Navy and helping them out and all that stuff, uh, yeah, we we yeah. Yeah, so we, we know what that's like. So uh, you got our our uh, uh, sympathy over there in California, but I can tell you we're gearing up now on the Gulf Coast for a heavy hurricane season. And maybe I'll throw some videos of some wild wind blowing around and be like some of these other guys making uh, videos out there, you know, of different things. But anyway, let's get back to the barrel. Do you see that H D? PE. What does that stand for? That is high density polyethylene. Okay. A type of plastic used for storage of gasoline. Gasoline or anything, right? Not, not, necessarily, not necessarily gasoline, but anything. 
So that's uh, fancy name for an upgraded plastic. Okay, all right. Fancy name for an upgraded plastic. Now, let's. This is full of gas. Wipe the bottom off. I can't tilt it over too much. Well, what's I mean, that? What's you'll that have guy? To turn say? that back over, but it does say HDPE. It's upside down, but yeah, is it? HDPE number two. Why don't you turn the phone upside down? No, I'm just joking, dude. Stop. I just did. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. So. And that's been stored in there for All right. a so, long time. So the, these gas tanks, these gas cans are three years old. They stay, gas stays stored in these thin cans. And, and I don't like how cheap they are. Today's cans, they're very cheap and thin. Gas has stayed in these cans for three years. And if they're emptied, they're only emptied for about a week. And lawn maintenance and 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 construction and all the machines and saws that I run and stuff like that. So this can stays full almost all the time and I've owned it for three years now. So this can is m mostly consisted of either having fumes in it or being full for three years. This barrel did a year and a half and I'm, I'm guesstimating there. Thereabouts a year and a half. And this drum has now been stored in a yard for another year because I since have gotten my hands on steel drums and have steel bands on them. Nice extra long-term storage. Extra long-term storage, just in case. But can you use blue drums in a bond? Short answer, yes. I'm going to say so because I did it. Can, am I responsible for anything that happens to you? Absolutely not, because I don't know exactly what, you know, whether you're... your read, situation is. Right, whether you're reading this correctly, or you're going to be in a wildfire or whatnot. I don't, I don't look. Well, I don't, the drum was previously damaged. I mean, this drum was in very good condition when we got it. Yeah. Right, and still is. I mean, it's been sitting in the sun upside down so this whole time. Um, so still even then, gas is good. Right. So can you can you store gas in a blue drum? I did. So whether you want to go to Reddit or different forums and read all the scientific explanations of why you can and can't, and will it permeate? Will fuel eat eventually eat through it? All that stuff. Look, in a year and a half, it hasn't, and this is three years old, and, and this happens. is made out of the same plastic just a different color right so some say that the blue is scientifically engineered in a slightly different man, man uh, you know if you break down the molecules and the shit that's in the plastic and all this crap and if you get all geeky on me i can't really compete with that but i can tell you trial and error in a bind this is what i used and i've used quite a few of them at one time to run generators by the way we probably should make a video on generators for folks that live on the Gulf Coast of the United States and, and other countries that east are going coast that are might that, not be yeah that yeah. east coast all that that are going to experience. So maybe we should go through the carburetors, uh, what to have on hand, maybe the the AVIs, the automatic voltage regulators, AVRs. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, AVRs, the automatic voltage regulators, and have brushes on hand on standby if you're running a generator long term and a change of oil, a couple of changes of oil. Um, because running generators for long periods of time, we learned a lot from Generac when uh, they were doing this during during the time when all the power got wiped out down in, in South America. And Generac was just getting flooded with warranties because they were running generators for three... I mean, that was the one that was in Central America, you mean like Puerto Cent Rico? Or, yeah, yeah, right? right. So they were running their generators, and, and, and their alternators were not failing. Their engines were failing because they weren't changing the oil. Mm -hmm. And they were trying to get generator, Generac to warranty out their generators. Several years ago, you may have tried to buy a generator and you couldn't get them because we were shipping them over to all your Home Depots and your Lowe's. And I remember all. that. They were shipping them over to uh, Central and South America because they couldn't get their hands on generators. So they were shipping them out. Anyway, we'll get into that later. But short answer, Blue, I've done it. I say if it's got the same, made out of the same material, same plastic, and it's thicker, I realize it's holding a lot more fuel, 55 gallons versus 5 gallons. But still, I mean, this plastic is paper thin. and It survived years. And this one is obviously not, doesn't have that marking on it. It's got like a proprietary secret because it was probably just coming out, you know, Probably one of the like fifth fifth generations after the steel gas cans, right? So yeah. I grew up in the era of still having steel gas cans around, and I enjoyed those steel gas cans. But we don't have that anymore, and it's hard to get your hands on them. But anyway, all I can say is blue. Yes. Pause that for a minute. We'll show you a black. 
All right, so here's your black. I have not tried to store fuel in the black yet. It's got the same code, but it's got something else. It's right. still made out of the same um, compounds. However, it's got an extra code by it. So it might be good to Google that code. And then I'm, I'm sure I'm going to get some scientific guys on here that are going to tell me, well, you know, it's got this in it and it doesn't have that in it. Um, listen, I'll, I'll probably Google that code before I consider using this barrel for gasoline as well. But the and blow it, did work. And there are some folks out there that might be using these drums already, and they might be fine. Um, but we'll find out because uh, we'll, we'll go inside and Google this before we upload this video. And then we'll find out. Uh, I think this barrel's pretty old. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, maybe that code is there because this barrel's pretty old. Does that say, what, 1998? Looks like, yeah. 98, and it's going to give you the month? Is that 12, 12 month arrow point to the 12 of 98? Yeah, actually, it is. <laughs> so, this is a 1999 barrel. Huh? Yeah. Uh, round it off. Wow, that's something, huh? He's been down here a while, too. Doesn't feel a stick. I don't know if they no, are. No, no, it does. No, it feels pretty sturdy. Let's read up on that, and we'll find out more about black. But anyway, we know we know blue holds fuel and is okay for a while, especially if you're going year to year. Um, I would just say if you had to do it in a bind, or even if you just wanted to do it uh, for a year or so and get by. You'll be fine. Uh, I would just shield it from the sun to minimize the expansion of fuel and make sure it's aerated in a place where it's not too close to your house, where you don't have any major, uh, you know, problems of, uh, you know, spontaneous combustion because the heat is like 107 degrees where we are. Gasoline will expand in that daily. It's that it's that temperature, and I'm sure in the place of my storage, even though I'm storing it under a lean to, and I have plenty of ventilation. I'm sure underneath that lean-to is probably just as hot as it is everywhere else. It just doesn't have direct sunlight beaming on it. Um, obviously, the ultimate thing to do is to bury these things like we do, like we used to do gas tanks at the gas, you know, giant 25,000 gallon fuel tanks at the fuel stations. That's what we used to do. I mean, these things were, you know, pretty big, um, pretty big tanks. And, uh, you know, in, in, in the southern United States, we had to strap these tanks down because we're below sea level and they want to float when the tanks get empty and push the parking lot up. And so we used to have to strap these things down with straps and concrete anchors in, into the ground after we dug a hole for them. So it was no joke installing those tanks and the fiberglass lines that go to the fuel stations. So I don't know. I've, I've, I've been around gasoline all my life. Um, haven't had a problem out of the blue yet. So take my word for what it's worth, and you can't hold me responsible. Let that be the disclaimer in this video. All right, guys.